Hey everyone, this is Tom Taylor and we're at the 2019 Grand National Roadster Show. Uh, we've got sponsorship this year from McGuire's, so thank you McGuire's. And uh, first off here we've got this killer, hand-built, completely hand-built Roadster. I don't know if we can call it a 32 or I guess we can. That uh, is a collaboration between Steve Mole and his shop and Jackie Howerton. And uh, they are over here along with Tommy Walsh. There's Jackie on the phone, but we'll get him in a second. Here's Steve. Steve, say hi to Good morning. Rock Hello. Journal's Facebook page. Hello, everybody. <laughs> here um, we are. All right. Tell us the story. You were talking to me about it a little bit earlier. How did this get going? Uh, this started many years ago, over 40 years ago, in talk. Jackie, it's been Jackie Howerton's um, baby. Uh, it's a car that he might have raced on the dirt tracks of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, converted to a street rod. And uh, that was the concept, the, the short story. Uh, I met Jackie in the 70s mid-70s. Uh, I was with an IndyCar team and met Jackie and and uh, I loved IndyCar racing, couldn't get enough. Jackie loved hot rodding, couldn't get enough and that was the common, that's what we had in common, is the admiration for what the other guy was doing. Okay. We talked about this car for a long time and, and now here it is. It's largely Jackie's uh, design um, and engineering uh, and it's a bespoke automobile it's everything is made for this car the chassis looks like an old Ford chassis but it's made out of chromoly sheet material and hand formed and uh, so it is built like a race car like he would have built a race car and that was part of the formula uh, the bolts on it are not chrome because you can't chrome bolts on a race car um, and so it's an, a full underpan car like a race car they normally straddle a transmission but this one the transmission protrudes up in the cockpit and we sit on each side of it. It's real cozy in there uh, because your feet are below the frame rails in this case and uh, so it required making a bell housing. And well let's let's come, let me come over yeah. and let's 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 look at the inside. Yeah. Okay go ahead. As you can see the the transmission is right there. Uh, the pedals are down at the floor and underpants. We don't have the mat in it right now we just have the towel because we're show yeah and the dash is very typical of a race car dash uh, windshield for the driver keep the mud off yeah and, um, even the seat cushions uh, pop out and unsnap so you can wash them after you've made a run okay and that's the that's the story here um, okay so a couple questions first of all it looks obviously 32 Ford ish did you start with Brookville stampings or anything like that? That's correct. The quarter panels are Brookville stampings. Okay. The uh, cowl and upper deck, but everything's been modified. I think it's narrowed three inches and moved the cockpit back nine inches and that kind of thing. So its proportions have changed. Yeah, it's been reproportioned for the, sure. The door is longer, and we certainly made the, the hood and the deck lid and all the underpants are made of aluminum. Okay. And uh, all the bulkheads are, you know, machined and so it's a it's a it's pretty hardcore hot rod. Well you ain't kidding. All right, let me walk around it and yeah. then I'm gonna ask you some more questions. Sure. Kind of give an overall. So you can see that grill is shoved way down below the frame horns. So the frame it, is there even is that frame? That's the frame. That is frame, but you said there's chrome only two chassis. No, no, the, the frame rails we made out of chromoly. Okay, okay. They made out of sheet material. So what appears to be a typical channel 32 frame is not. It's one that was made okay. for this car out of sheet material. All right, very good. Okay, that was, that was cleared up. You can up. see it even in the cockpit. Pardon? You can even see it in the cockpit. The, the frame is exposed in the cockpit. I can oh, yeah, there it is. And here, it, let's see where it oh, goes. Yeah. Here. So, yeah, so this really is a car on a frame, or it's actually channeled over the frame. Very cool. All right. So, Very cool. All right, let me get it from the back here. In the back, it's all business. 
fuel tank, rear end. It's all torsion bar suspension. And uh, it's got a fuel bladder in it. Watts link, underpants. Have you guys tested it? Did you drive it much? No, we haven't tested it. Okay. That's next. All right. Probably get tested on the dirt tracks in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Uh, if Jackie has anything to do with it, absolutely. The significance of the 42, I don't know if I had mentioned that, the significance of the 42 on the side is that's the number that he had on the car that he won the Hoosier 100. All right, hold it. We're not going to be able to hear you. Oh, okay. So let me come around and then you can you can tell us. Well, maybe I'll let Jackie tell. It's really his story. He's, uh, he's on the phone. He's oh, playing yeah. shy. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right, go ahead. Well, the significance of number 42, Jackie won the Hoosier 100 in 1974, and the, he was driving a car for George McNaughty, and it was number 42. And okay. winning the Hoosier 100 is like winning yep. the Indy 500 exactly. if you're in a... In a Dirt, dirt, tr dirt track. Uh, yeah. That race that he won, uh, Al Unser finished second, Mario Andretti finished third. So he was in fast company. He didn't wow. back into that win or anything. No. He drove real hard for 100 miles. And so that's the. And actually, we this this project here got underway about 42 years after we met. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we're putting a spin on 42, but but it's really about his win at the Hoosier Hunter. Sure, sure. You know. Yeah. Can we see the engine? Oh yeah. Sure. It's a, we, we call it a Mighty Mouse. Uh, his uh, racing friend, uh, Chaz Rosebill, it's all aluminum, lightweight crank and all, and uh, it's a small block Chevrolet. It makes right around 500 horsepower, it's 349 inches. Let me come around here, I'm gonna. It's got yeah. three twos, but they're Weber's. The Weber's are out of a um, Maserati. Okay. In this, in this particular car, the firewall, and that is the motor plate. Okay. So it's, it's all right. It's, it, so it's tied in hard to the frame and it, it's the motor the, plate. Okay. The motor's hanging on that. And the transmission is transmission is yeah, uh, Tremec five speed. Tremec five speed. Okay. But the bell housing had to be made for this car uh, because, because of the motor plate. Because no, because of patch packaging. Uh, oh. It's okay. real small and uh, allow you to get your feet in there. So the whole case and everything is different. Yeah. The 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 bell housing is made of aluminum, machined out of aluminum, and uh, the exhaust runs through the bottom of it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I wish we could see that. Yeah. You can see the, the trough, well, it's hard to see here, but there's a trough down the center where the exhaust is. And, uh, yeah, go ahead. You can go ahead and close that. Danny, you guys can go ahead. Eric? It's kind of hard to see under there. You can see the frame. The spreader bar coming through there, frame horns. <laughs> so Jackie. You turn in the barrel, Jackie. Well, I saw you avoiding us. <laughs> This is for Rotter's Journal for their Facebook page. This uh -oh, is a live interview. Uh oh, yeah. So uh, fill us in a little bit more. Steve kind of gave us the background on it. Um, this is the second one of these that you've conjured up. The first one being the silver, the silver one that uh, the Hendig, the Hendig that, that yeah, SoCal but, finished up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you were inspired to do this from your win no, at oh, the Hoosier no, Hundred. No, 
uh, because I wasn't hot rodder back then, but I really uh, kind of realized after the Lindig car that SoCal finished that it was a total aluminum bodied race car background design. Everything was handmade, the door latches, the mechanics of the door, everything. And then I thought, you know, it's almost kind of sucks that someone can enter something like that against a stock 32 Ford. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, I'd like to build something that was all Ford so that uh, I could be part of the all Ford hot rod deal because that's hot rod. You know, yeah. what the first car was, it was just something I came up with. Right. So I thought I want to build a, you know, 32 is the holy grail of the hot rod. So I yep. want to build a hot rod, number one. Not, I mean, not a, really not a hot rod. I wanted to build something that represented a race car I would have built when I was 20 and raced at the Tulsa Dirt Track. Mm -hmm. So I would have gone out and bought me a, a Ford body and a Ford front axle and a Ford rear end and and spindles and I went racing, like, and which I did. And so on this car, every single thing on it is Ford. The spindles are Ford. It's got a 37 Ford front axle. It's yep. got a Ford body. It's got a Ford uh, tapered rear end housing with a quick chain. And it's even got a 36 Ford front axle for a back bumper. Okay. So I just wanted to do it. And then back in 74, Steve Mole and I met. And we had this vision we was going to build a car together. Well, we never did it. And so I thought, well, you know, everybody knows me by now, and they know I'll never <laughs> get it finished. And Steve will finish it. Yeah. And then this will be the car we never built. So that's basically kind of, in a nutshell, it's supposed to represent uh, a dirt race car I would have built when I was 20. Of course, I wouldn't be capable of building this thing when I was 20. <laughs> well, maybe so. so. Yeah, I don't know. I had a, I had some nice cars, but this is uh, a little nicer than I was capable of back then, you know. And would you have reproportioned it like this? Well, what? It's funny you ask because when you when you build a race car to go around the local modified race, you know you're just at that point you're just a kid, you've been watching all the older guys, and you kind of know how they do it. So you you build a a chassis that's built to race according to your rules and the engine set back and suspension and then you go buy your old body and you whack it up and you set it on your car well maybe it don't fit now because the seats in different place the motor in different place and the wheels are different so you start get your torch out and you whack the body up and you stick it on there and go racing Mm -hmm. And so however that ends up looking, it just is what it is. It's a form and function thing. So when I built this car, and I wanted to know if I wanted to do it, I drew up a frame, I put the motor in, suspension on it, I got in, I set in, you know, on paper. And, and I thought, then I'm going to, I actually took a picture of Ken Gross's Roadster, mm -hmm. who was in a Rotter's Journal. And it was about the right proportion for my drawing. So I took some scissors and I cut the quarter panels and the doors and shit and stuck it on my car where wherever it would fit, you know, and be centered with a wheel and go with a seat and all that crap. So I looked at it and, I th and if I liked the looks of it, I was going to do it. And if I didn't, I was going to just say, well, screw it. Mm -hmm. And I got it all done. And in some ways, I was kind of disappointed because I was thinking it was going to look really cool like a race car. Yeah. But it really just looked like a stock 32 Ford that was a little scaled down. Mm -hmm. And Chip Foose had made a statement one time to, I think to, I don't remember who it was, but they told me that he said, when you know you did a good job on building a car and you modified it, to the extreme is that you can't tell what you did it just looks like you didn't do anything and so when I got this done and had all those pictures stuck on it I was kind of disappointed because I had this cool car that I designed 
and it still just looked like a 32 Roadster. And I, but then I thought about it, and I thought, shit, maybe that's good, because you didn't screw anything up. You know? <laughs> and uh, so basically, like this car, you I mean, you know, bodies more than I do, because I'm not really a 32 guy. I'm just a race car guy. But, you know, the quarter panels are nine inches shorter mm -hmm. from the door post. And then the cockpit opening, I cut it right through here. Right, right through there, and that through here, and I shuffled the opening back because it would have been too close to the door post. Plus, I need the room. Mm -hmm. So that made this shorter. Right. And then I shortened the cow, uh, I think three inches, narrowed it an inch and a half. All this back here is three inches narrower. Okay. And uh, so I kind of stood the doors up a little more vertical because I never liked that look and race cars were always kind of vertical. Okay. And I wanted to use 32 grill shell and, and, I, and then I made the, the frames all made out of just 4130 sheet, you know, four bait sheet of 4130 steel. So I drew a frame up and I wanted it to look like a 32 but be where it needed to be to be a race car. So the frame horns and everything was kind of as close as I could get, even though they're way high compared to normal cars. Yeah, I mean, the body's channeled mm -hmm. real low over it. But uh, anyhow, that's kind of the basic. So how, how, uh, how short, much shorter of a wheelbase is this from stock? It's hardly any. It's, it's probably the a same. Stock, a stock is 106. Right. And this is 104. And by, okay. And by accident, it started out 106, and I got kind of screwed up up there in the front, and I needed some room for something. And I didn't like the looks of something, so I moved it back a little. Ended up 104, and the funny thing about the 104 is that that was the exact wheelbase rule for a super modified in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> so, so everything's kind of. It's all kind of it's just exactly. synchronicity or something. Uh -huh. Wow. And Grimsley, he, he's an older guy, and I didn't, I didn't think he could get in and out of it because he's not good. And Grimsley is the, is the owner. owner, yes. So when I made the steering mount, I made it where you can loosen it up and you can raise and lower the yes. steering wheel. Yeah, we so saw it just it. slides in there. Yeah. So, uh, it's kind of a neat little feature, you know. It's not something I would have done in a race car. And one of the, there's a few really, really special features about this car that no one's going to know except me because I did it. Okay. And I've been doing this kind of stuff my whole life, race car stuff. So it's got a really special rear suspension in that the torsion arms, you know, there's a lot of stock cars and modifieds and super modified and sprint cars that have done damn near everything. Mm -hmm. And there's some cars that go to the center line of the rear axle with the torsion arms and pivot around them, but there's never been one that I've seen that not only pivots around the axle, but it also can swivel like a heim joint okay because right. they don't make anything so with modern uh computers and cnc stuff now they can make that happen so i drew it up and david mo machined it and i don't know if it you know it's not any better it's just i wanted to do it yeah and uh, another thing when i was a kid and my dad was racing at Tulsa Speedway, I was, you know, I love looking at cars, and I was probably 18 or something like that. My dad was a local champion, and but one of the competitors was John Zink Company, and they'd won Indy mm -hmm. 55, 56, mm -hmm. and they were friggin' professionals, mm -hmm. and we're just local guys, so, but my dad always beat them. So he had a special match race for those two cars, and I remember I my dad was kind of like me. He's kind of raced out of the salvage and, you know, never seen some of the things like IndyCar guys did. And I remember walking up to that 
John Zink car, and I looked in the window. It was a 32 sedan. And it, all cars I ever saw, local yokel guys like us, they just had a, like whatever dash was in that car and was made, that was it. You yeah. know, and you put your steering wheel on there and sure. off you go. Sure. But they had, <laughs> that dash was in there, but they had another dash, like a sprint car or an Indy Roadster, that went around the steering wheel and had a little windshield around. Man, that is friggin' cool as hell. <laughs> So I thought, I'm going to build this with that little sprint car dash. Right. And everybody said, oh, you can't do that on hot rod. And I said, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Because I was fascinated with that as a kid because it, it's what would be on a real race car. Right. So that, and then a, there's another feature of this car that no one's ever even going to know probably, but that bell housing is, you know, most bell hands are around. Bell hands it goes all the way down to the bottom of the car, straight down. They'd be here if they could. Because the last car, I always hated the exhaust. I've been with my wife outside the And then SoCal kind of ruined them for me. So I, I wanted the exhaust to go not outside. Well, if you look where you sit, you know, you can't. You can't run exhaust in here. Your feet are in there. Yep. So that bell housing has an entry for exhaust pipes. And there's a tunnel that goes all the way down the 4130 structure part of the frame. And the exhaust pipes go down that tunnel underneath. You can't see it. Okay. And out the rear. So. Are they stacked? No, they're, they're, they're side to side. Okay. It's cool as hell. Okay. And. Uh, so do so, the pipes tie into the bell housing? Does the bell housing like have? No, no, it just, I mean, there's no room. The clutch, see on this car, the clutch linkage, the clutch fork comes out the bottom of the car. Okay. See, there's no fork in it. Because right. you can't have it, you wouldn't have room for your feet. Right. So the fork goes down and kind of to the side a little. And the, so now the clutch linkage, exhaust pipe, and friggin' flywheel is all trying to get the same spot. Yeah. It's friggin' hard. And, uh, but it works slick, and it's neater and shit. Very cool. You know, so Very cool. this, I wanted, you know, the other car made the tunnel, but I wanted it to look like, you know, because an Indy Roadster has a, they had a Halibrand transmission in Bell mm -hmm. And so I came from back then, and I wanted it when you looked in here, since this is like an Indy Roadster inside, mm -hmm. and the seating, the underpants, stuff, mm -hmm. I wanted it to look like this was a, some kind of a race car, Bell housing and transmission. It's not, it's a trimming counter. This is all fake. Right, yeah. So, but I just thought it'd be cool. It is kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. No, cool. yeah. So, um, I'd like to see a film picture. Just a uh, lot of neat little shit that I just wanted to do because I wanted to do it. You know? So why why isn't this your car? Well, because everyone that knows me by now knows that I never get it finished, <laughs> and so that's why I sold the SoCal car. Right. Because I just got tired of it. And uh, when I was younger and had my shop, I was known as a workaholic and always working too late and too long. And once I quit, started, I wanted to be a hot rider. So, but by then I just kind of ran out of gas and the last car I screwed around forever and finally got tired of it and sold it to Lynn to Fred Fleet. Right. And so I knew myself yes, enough on this so. deal that I want to do it because it's going to be neater and shit. And it's going to be all forward like a hot rod guy would want. Not like the last one's all handmade. Right. So, Steve and I always talked about doing something together, and I knew he would finish it and I wouldn't. So, that's basically what happened. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. You want that open? No, that's okay. No. That's all right. Cool. Go ahead. So, that's kind of basically the story of the whole damn thing you know it's really supposed to be a representation of of my past and and kind of like something i wished i'd have built 
and ran to Tulsa Speedway, which I did, but it wouldn't have been this much. No. Yeah. But it is. I mean, don't make any mistake about this car. This, and I, I, we've had words over this thing, you know. <laughs> and because it is a, a flat-out race car, frame, everything. I, I didn't. I just was dead. I don't want headlights on. I don't want ever be seen with headlights. Uh, I don't want the grill chrome because race car wouldn't have it. So, well, they had to do it, you know, because they're show car guys. So I was just pissed off, disappointed. But uh, that's the only thing on the car that's not. Now, however, that dashboard, when I dream this car up, that's quarter inch stainless steel. Okay. And that was to be sandblasted. It's kind of hand rubbed and left alone. Well, Steve being a body shop guy, he just had to fucking paint it. <laughs> Pissed me off a lot. But, you know, he's finishing it. And if it wasn't for him, this thing wouldn't even be here. Right so on. there was a few things that I that would be the way I wanted it on this car. And I, to me, it would look hell of a lot better and more race car but hell i never got it done <laughs> and really some of it like that transmission and bell hiding was supposed to have been sandblasted and kind of burnished so it looked like a casting but he wanted to polish it and the truth is it looks better okay <laughs> so you know well it was a collaboration both, it was a collaboration yeah. And you're open to certain things, and he is. Well, so. I'm not, but he did them anyway. <laughs> and he knows me well enough that, you know, we're close enough friends that he can screw me a little, and I can screw him a little, <laughs> and we'll still be okay. But, right. uh, but that's those are parts that were real dear to me because I've never seen a friggin' stainless steel quarter-inch dashboard, and it was also structural. It supports the door post holds that little steering and windshield and all that shit and it wouldn't have been as glitzy it was, it was i've seen it that way before I took it and i loved it but you know i've got my taste and they got theirs and uh it's not arms and legs so. <laughs> right on exactly well that's very cool i appreciate you uh yeah. kind of filling us in on this and steve did at the front end and so uh yeah, that's very cool. Well, yeah, good luck to you guys, and yeah. uh, we'll see what happens. I well, think you're going to be one of the last ones because your car is going actually it'll be displayed where, right where, where the judging is. Yeah. yeah. So you guys can kick back and yeah. kind of see everything else yeah. from there. Well, we I didn't want to do this because <laughs> I'm not a car show guy at all. Because you know everything would have been you know pretty boring looking if I had done, but. Um, it's, uh, we, we both talked about it. We never planned on doing this in the beginning. I wanted to have it like I wanted and just have it here for my friends to see it. Yeah. And then once it got going, we thought, well, shit, you know, it might, probably won't win, but it might, because it's not, you know, gonna be as much, this car's built to be a show car. Yeah. And mine's not, so we knew we probably couldn't win, but, uh, we thought, shit, what if we did, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Can't well, the it. good thing is, you don't need it. I mean, no, I, you're not going to, it's not it, going to matter one way or the other. No. It'd be nice. I'm but. already over the hill, so. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, Jackie. Well, as always, we're impressed with everything you do, and uh, this is phenomenal. And what do you, you got another one up your sleeve? Oh, God. I've, I've got two more. Oh, boy, all I, right. I have one at home that I'm about half done with the chassis, and that one will be mine. Then I have another frame built and pieces for all of it, rear and everything, that will be Steve's. That's and similar to this? Exactly. Oh, okay. I made all the parts all the same time. So you made three of everything or whatever. Yeah, okay. ex ex well, everything that I made. And, you know, I made the... Originally the the quarters and the cowl and, the, and all that stuff just to see if I liked it. And then uh -huh. Steve and them finished them and made us the match. And then they did all the inner pins and 
could and stuff like that. Um, I don't have any of that. So end up, I'll end up taking mine. Um, I left all the jigs I made for the quarter panels at Steve's. So he'll have Jimmy or somebody make a couple of quarters and he'll send them to me and I'll throw them on my frame. And, okay. And uh, so I eventually potentially could have a car but I have got the motor and everything but who knows if I'll ever finish it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'm 75 so I kind of it's hard to get motivated and uh, which it was kind of cool to go to Steve's and work on this because he's got all his young kids in there <laughs> and it was really neat to work with them because they're young and they they're good and and so it kind of got me caught up in it and, and yeah. I was working along you know but when I'm by myself at home it's just freaking hard to you, know, you go out in the shop and you know your 55 series there and you're five women and this and that and ah shit or maybe I'll just clean my 55 off and go to lunch you know <laughs> so it just it's just really hard <laughs> all right you know all right but it's there and I'm, you know, Steve and I, we've talked about this. And, and so I'm kind of motivated to finish it so I can have, you know, this one's like this and I can do mine. And mine are most likely, I probably just primer the steel body parts, uh -huh. leave the aluminum body parts, which would be the underpan, maybe the trunk lid and the hood, and uh, maybe just paint the frame and gun blue a lot of the stuff and not and be more what I really, you know, the dream that I had was it looked real hardcore race car. Like all these door hinges, I wanted to make these out of sort of like angle iron, which we kind of did, but uh -huh. they got overdone and chromed. Yeah. <laughs> but I was going to gun blue. Okay. So, uh, and I said, well, I'm on the outside. So, these end up being a little more embellished, but these are actually angle iron here. Okay. And so, you know, I can do all that on mine. Yeah. You know, I, I dig that stuff. I mean, for me, a hand rub, nice piece of workmanship, it's gun blue and oil, it's just really nice. Okay. You know. Sure. But so is this. Sure. I mean, this is a lot prettier than mine will be. <laughs> all right, Jackie, thank you very all much. All right. That was great. Well, thank you. No, thank you. Hello. Kind of neat to be able to, because a lot of this stuff, if you don't tell someone, they're just not going to know it. And yeah. I enjoy, I enjoy talking about things that, that I do that I think are cool and unique because it's just, I mean, it's like sleeping with a beautiful woman. If you can't tell someone, you know, it's like shit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you don't have to print that. <laughs> All right, Jackie, thank you very right. much. It was right. good, good talking you. with you. All right. All right, we're going to take one last, uh, one last shot. Yeah, one last shot at this, and then uh, we'll, we'll be back. So uh, this is the 25th anniversary for Runner's Journal, so uh, check out some of the stuff we've got. And thank you to McGuire's Wax and Care Products for sponsoring, and we'll be on to the next car here. Thank you.